Welcome, siblings of the storm, to the very first Tempest Runner transmission, a show where we talk about everything High Republic. I'm Sam. I'm Liz. I'm Annie. And I am Mike. Wonderful. So, uh, obviously, while this is the the very first uh, episode, really, this is episode zero. So, uh, ironically, we're not going to be actually talking about anything High Republic in this episode. This is simply an introduction to us, an introduction to the show, what it's all about, and hopefully you gain some kind of idea of, of, of what we're doing here. It's not too complicated, so don't worry. But basically, um, what this show is, essentially what's in the intro, we're going to be talking about a topic of the High Republic every week. For example, our very first episode that we will be releasing next week is going to be Martian Rose Backstory. And then, you know, and every week we'll be releasing a different topic of discussion and just uh, speculating on what the answers might be to all these mysteries that have been uh, been introduced to us. So, for this episode, what we're going to talk about is, you know, our histories with Star Wars, our favourite memories, our favourite moments, and everything like that. So, I don't know, who, want, who wants to start? Who's, who's eager to share their, their Star Wars story? Mike, do you want to you start yours? What's your, well, what's your earliest Star Wars moment? How, how about we start with that? Earliest Star Wars moment, I think it's uh, August 2000. You, you guys remember uh, what Blockbuster was? You know, before the I remember Netflix. Blockbuster very you well, very it? vivid memories. Right. Yeah. Can you believe there's people alive who never, never been to a Blockbuster? Anyway, there could be uh, people listening in our audience that have never been to a Blockbuster, and that is tragic. Yeah. Children. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> children. Oh my god. Um. So anyway, yeah. No. August 2000. Um. Uh, family and I, we go to a Blockbuster. I have zero interest in film whatsoever. I don't even know it's Star Wars. We're going through the aisles, and uh, to my the level of my face, I see uh, this beautiful cover, you know, like sleeve, you know, VHS sleeve. Can, there's even people who don't know what a VHS is, uh, cassette tape. Uh-huh. And uh, I see, like, this Jesus-looking figure, Qui-Gon <laughs> Jinn. Uh, Liam Neeson's oh, wow. Qui-Gon oh. Jinn. You know, you got... Beautiful Kenobi. You got a little kid. Uh, I forgot the actor's name in real life, but uh, Anakin. I think it's Jake Lloyd. Jake, Jake Lloyd, Lloyd. Is that right? Jake Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, Jake Lloyd. And uh, I'm like, this is cool. I want it. And my parents are like, oh yeah, it's Star Wars. So we rent that, and we rent episodes four, five, and six. And over the course of a week, I watched all those uh, movies. But I actually saw like Phantom Menace like no less than ten times. I kid you not. <laughs> and I I love that. And it got to the point when it, when it was time to return the show, I loved the show so much that I put in like a, uh, I instead of putting in the Phantom Menace, I put in a different tape. Oh and wow! So that, you I stole. The, I stole in the name of Star Wars. Your okay? earliest memory of Star Wars is you. <laughs> yeah, I I am committed. I will commit crimes for Star Wars. Don't do not kid. Me. No, so that is my first encounter with Star Wars. That's, that's cool. What about Liz? What's your earliest memory with Star Wars? Um, my earliest is probably uh, around maybe when I was like like five-ish. Um, I was born in 95, so... Yeah, um, same. And actually, I think I got into Star Wars at five, but... but same, represent. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, episode one wasn't out yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like in the living room and we were watching episode four and like we had a little coffee table and then every time that like the intro where like Darth Vader comes inside, I would literally get scared shitless. Oh, you were like scared of Vader? Yeah, I was really scared of Vader. But you like Vader now, like he interests you now, right? Oh no, yeah, I like I like. Now we know the man behind the mask, um, he's he's not too scary. Yeah, he's (laughs) not at all. (laughs) Yeah, so I would hide um every time he would come on screen but only when he's making really dramatic entrances like usually when he's just like there like i'm fine but when he's making an entrance i get really i mean that's his first that's his first like introduction into like a new hope yeah it's him coming through the the smoke-filled doorway and yeah and um also i i have another one Mm. um it's same same thing it's um the cave on dagobah oh yeah where like luke fights himself in the vader suit yeah, that was pretty horrifying to me as a five-year-old. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I grew up with it from when I was really little from my brother and mm. uh, had all the toys, like all the, the vintage toys and stuff yeah. like that. And then when episode one came out, I remember like all the ads, oh. like 
Like, I remember specifically the Taco Bell, like, cups and stuff, and yeah, I think we might still have some. Um, all the promo for episode one was really good. See, I remember none of that. I don't remember anything from episode two and episode three. I had started really, like, getting back into it, and episode three is my favorite. Mm. I remember having launched, like, a pirated copy, like, at home. So again, another Um, another thief. (laughs) <laughs> Another thief of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. What is what is us? Are we, are we par- I guess we I are Nihil. So you belong nice. with the Nihil. Okay, so I uh, I can't actually remember a point in time when I didn't know what Star Wars was. The earliest memories I have were watching Star Wars VHSs at my grandma's house, but she didn't have any of the original movies because my nice. mom and my uncle uh, watched those a lot when they were kids. So I think one of them has the copies. But uh, I watched Episode One. The VHS, and I watched the Ewok animated movie. Don't remember much about that, except there was maybe like a giant what, bat a monster or something. <laughs> then there may have been one or two episodes of Droids, but I don't remember those as much. So, I guess you have you kind of have memories of like not like the well. I mean, obviously you do have like official film memories, but you also have like the the weirder stuff like the Caravan of Courage or Ewok yeah. weirdness. Yeah, but. He, yeah, even then, like, I remember they were, those were the Ewoks from the movie, so I knew what they were. I, I was just born with the knowledge of every Star Wars film. <laughs> still still know everything to come. Don't spoil High Republic for us. I think my earliest earliest memory of Star Wars was, I remember, I remember very vividly, actually, I was in the living room, and it was, A New Hope was just on TV, you know when they just show, like, runs of it on TV, we didn't have, like, the DVD, because no one in my family is is a Star Wars fan. Like, not like me. And, <gasps> and, and uh, yeah, it's terrible. So I, I had to, like, self... Dude, I had to self-learn. I had to self-train. So, but my dad was... was he just had it on. I, you know, he, he's not, like, against Star Wars. He thinks it's kind of stupid. Uh, but I think he just had it on in the background. And obviously, because I was a kid, I was, like, five, six at the time, maybe. He was like, hey, you might like this. And I, I vividly remember it was the scene where... Um, you know, uh, in A New Hope, when... So I missed the first start of it with Vader... But it's the scene in New Hope where C three PO is like waving to the um waving to the to the Jawa Sankra, like, over here, over here kind of thing. And uh, I I vividly remember that being like the very first scene that I uh that I remember from Star Wars. And then I don't really remember I, I remember watching the movies in a really weird order. Like I'm sure I watched it like four, one, five, six. Same. In a really, yeah, I, I think that's just a quite a normal thing because, I mean, especially seeing as my parents weren't into Star Wars, it was kind of like, here, just get him like a Star Wars movie and, and just let him watch that. <laughs> but I do remember a really vivid memory of um, Christmas time. It must have been in either, it was probably 2000 because obviously the VHS, so The Phantom Menace came out in 1999, so I'm assuming the VHS would have come out sometime in 2000, but I remember it being Christmas and I hadn't, I obviously hadn't seen The Phantom Menace because the first Star Wars movie I watched in the in the cinema in the theaters was Revenge of the Sith, but I remember getting the VHS um, for Christmas. Uh, it must have been two thousand, and I, I also got like a, a toy lightsaber. You remember those toy spring action lightsabers that you could of get, course. like where you'd like, yeah, and it was like a purple one. Was this pre episode two? Because I don't think you see was it Mace Windu brandish a purple bladed lightsaber until that that episode. That's a re- that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Maybe maybe my memories comes later than that. Because I, I, I kind of remember, I got the book of Attack of the Clones before I'd even seen the movie, because my parents wouldn't take me to see it because they didn't like Star Wars, which I actually think is kind of mean now. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe I did get into it a little bit later than I thought, but um, I definitely, yeah, you might be right, but it was it was definitely Obi-Wan's The Phantom Menace hilt, so I don't know what the what the deal was with that, why it was purple, but... um. I guess it was just maybe it was a knockoff. I don't know, but that um, or Hasbro was probably very yeah. forward thinking. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe they were like, "Hey, there's gonna be a purple lightsaber in the next movie." But yeah, it, it was sometime around that time. I was like five, six, seven. Um, but yeah, th- those are my two earliest memories of Star Wars. Next, we'll talk about. Let's do top three favorite Star Wars movies. So, Mike, let's go first. Seeing as you went first last time, we'll go around in the same order. Oh man, you can't do that to me. Uh... <laughs> on the spot, top top three. Uh, Revenge of the Sith top, is up top there. Three. Revenge of the Sith. I, I, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm ballsy enough to uh, make a number one. This isn't prequel means, but it's 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 top three for sure. Sure, absolutely top three. Actually, I think a safe number one is. Uh, it's not going to be Empire Strikes uh, Strikes Back. It's actually going to be New Hope, because that I think is your your perfect Star Wars movie, but also perfect you know space opera 
fantasy sci-fi yeah. movie in general you don't it's it's a movie where you absolutely need no background knowledge of star wars even though it's canonically the fourth movie um right. it is about a, a story of a farm boy who wants to make a difference wants to go out you know grow mm -hmm. uh, find himself avenge the the loss of his uh you know, adoptive parents and you mm -hmm. know uh, be with the princess and and it's just so fun and the whole like the uh, the trench run that it never fails to give me chills and there's not a single lightsaber mm -hmm. in sight and i can't think of a single well maybe one or two other moments but other in terms of like sheer importance of just badassness in the series i can't think of another one that can give me the same uh sensation um but that one i think is a safe right. number one and three, yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, three is constantly it, it's constantly being switched out. Um, but I think mm. as of right now, I think the Last Jedi actually. I'm gonna go there. Yeah, yeah, yep. I'm gonna go there. Last Jedi is pretty good, very controversial, but uh, with the fan base, but I I like it. Cinematography, yeah, Ryan Johnson, he knocks it out of the park, and the chemistry, the, yeah, the build up yeah. between Ben and and Ray is just phenomenal. I, I love absolutely, it. man, absolutely. Uh, Liz favorite top three star wars films go all right number one revenge of the sith it's i mean it's pretty easily like my number one number two is probably the last jedi mm. um i'm liking where this is going because the cinematography is just amazing and just the way every every aspect of that movie was amazing to me just like the technicality of it and the story was really good. There's some parts that I don't like, but I can overlook those because it's not any anything that's make or break for me. Like none of the Luke sure. stuff was like bad to me because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know what happens later on in the expanded universe, like why he did what he did. Or like sure. why why he was so mopey and stuff like that. Even though like I mean I still wanted him to be the legend of luke skywalker type of deal you know my third oh that's hard the third one's always the tricky one yeah i feel like the third one's always like because everyone has their top two quite easily and then the third one's the tricky one i guess it's episode five like it's it's good i mean i i know everyone says episode five is like their favorite i don't see how that could ever be my favorite just with everything else that's out there um, but okay. I think I like the, the romance aspect of it with Han and Leia the most. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely, yeah. And, like, the colors of that movie. It's so nice. Very, mo It's very moody in tone. Yeah, but like, yeah. But it's also, like, when you get to, like, moody. Cloud City, it's so, yeah. like, beautiful. It's, yeah, it's so, like, like heavenly. Yeah, it's, like, pastels and it's right, really, yeah, like, it's, fresh. It's, I mean, the... And, it's the, I mean that movie really was like a masterclass in being. Sorry, I probably I don't want to oh, no, want to nerd out too much. My <laughs> Strikes Back. You'll probably guess my favorite pick, but anyway, yeah. That yeah, that's um, that's it for me. That's your that's your top three. Yeah. They're good top three. I mean, apart from Revenge of the Sith, but you know you hey. can't win them all. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, Revenge of the Sith. Look, Revenge of the Sith. I can appreciate it as a movie. Can I ask a snips a question real quick? Uh, Liz, a question. Yeah. How would your uh, top three change if the Siege of Mandalore was? Uh, put into a movie or if you were to count like season seven Ooh. of clone wars as a movie how would you add that to your top three mm, the see just the four episodes of siege like i might put it slightly above empire oh but, my god like, it but like not really though because i there's a lot of things that are rushed in that that last arc that I felt could have been um, expanded upon. Fair. Like, I felt like being in the ship too long was, like, the last part of Siege, like, when Maul's escaping and, like, they're fighting the other clones, like, I felt like that was, um, it was really long for me. Every time I watch that, I just feel like that part's really long for some reason. Yeah. Um, I've only seen Siege once, but I remember that I think the best episodes are... Which one's the one where Order sixty six actually happens? Is that the, is that the third that's episode? That's the, the third, third episode. one. Yeah, that's my that's favorite. That's the best. That's yeah. the best one, I think. Yeah. I think four. Yeah, I agree with you. Four feels really somewhat rushed. Yeah, me, it I feels think. rushed or like not enough or like they needed yeah. to change locations or something. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah, no, I know. I I'm actually in complete um, agreement with you there. I don't know. Now thinking about it, I think I don't think it would my tier list i think it's a good companion to episode three if you had watched clone wars like watching it before but um 
I don't think it's it could be a standalone unless there's a major mm. change in the last like half of it. I had to ask, but awesome. Yeah. Good question, though, Mike. I like it. Manny, top three favorite Star Wars movies. So I'm not really a, uh, a like a numbered list kind of guy. Ever since the okay, tier yeah. list came out, you know, I think that's mm. just a more effective way of ranking things. <laughs> But we I don't agree, have yeah, we don't I have enough time to do a whole tier list of uh, every Star Wars movie. <laughs> maybe though. one day, maybe for episode. Maybe of maybe another we'll episode. Do a tier list. No, I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can just kind of put on any of them and enjoy them. Mm. You know, yeah. like, even the bad ones, like uh, I, I, like even like uh, you know, the prequels or Episode Two, which is probably my oh, least episode, favorite. What about Episode Nine? Can, what about Episode Nine? Could you just stick that on and enjoy it? Uh, kind of. Uh, you know, the color grading is still makes it a little difficult to watch, yeah. but. You know, there's I like never. some good scenes, <laughs> so I could probably, if it's on TV, it's the only Star Wars movie on, I can probably just leave it on. Yeah, yeah. You know, I enjoy all of them. I enjoy all of the original trilogy, because I feel like each of them um, adds something to Star Wars, like, yeah. even uh, Return of the Jedi, which is usually the cited as the weakest one, I think the, the Vader redemption arc and the scenes with the Emperor are like, really define Star Wars? Like, yeah. like, like, each one defines Star Wars in a different way. They all add something. It's like I, the core. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think you can really, like, take out any of those. And even no. the prequels as a whole also add to the mythos. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I just enjoy most of them for, for different reasons. Yeah. They all have something. Cool, so you're doing the, the cop-out answer. You're doing the cop-out answer, they're all good. Yeah, I'm doing the cop-out <laughs> answer. No, no, definitive top three would have to be the holiday special, Caravan oh, of Courage, and yeah, but that's uh, the you raised on. Lego, the, Lego Star Wars The Padawan Menace, released as a direct-to-DVD movie. Have you heard of that one? The Padawan Menace? I've heard of Revenge of the Brick. Not heard of The Padawan Menace. No, no, no. So you, see, so you see The Padawan Menace follows the story of this young orphan kid who uh, sneaks into the Jedi Temple and he meets Master Yoda and then they go on a series of adventures. And you'll never guess the plot twist, who this orphan kid is that had is goes he... on adventures with uh, Yoda. I really want to know. Do you have any ideas? It? It's Han Solo. It's a young Han Solo and oh, he go no. sneaks into the Jedi Temple and goes on adventures with Yoda. So the guy that, like, firmly doesn't really believe in the Force is traveling around with Yoda and, and sneaking yeah. into Jedi temples. Yeah, I mean, he's made out of Lego bricks, so maybe the, the original <laughs> so it's trilogy... not really meant to take So, you know, it's not really canon. And, and, you know, you know, they break the fourth wall, Darth Vader keeps walking onto the set, and George Lucas has to tell him it's not his time yet. Okay. <laughs> Sounds kind of good, actually. Yeah, it's Sounds like good. classic Lego humor. Yeah, it's pretty good. Underrated film. Like Nobody ever talks money. about it. You know, it's like Solo before Solo. It's, it's a solo prequel, really. <laughs> it's this, yeah, it's the, the part of the solo saga. Cool. I like your top three, Manny. I do. My top three. Okay. My favorite is Empire Strikes Back. I know it's kind of the <sighs> expected answer these days. Everyone goes on about Empire, and it's almost become like a... Uh, it's like your go-to, like, cliche top number one. Right, it's like, yeah, but, but to be fair, like, I, I feel like Empire is genuinely the best. It's the best, I think it's the best cinematography, some of the best acting, although I think a lot of that goes to the sequels, but definitely the acting was really good for its time. Just the the script, I, one thing I really enjoy about Empire, more than any of the other Star Wars films, is how seriously it takes its plot. So, uh, maybe quite controversial opinion here, but I feel like Star Wars always has this kind of idea that it has to be goofy, that it has to be, and, and, and Empire has its moments of that, right? Right. But I would, per I personally do quite like Star Wars to be maybe a little bit more serious in the way it takes its tone. And the one thing I really did like about Empire Strikes Back was that it really did that. It didn't have a bunch of, you know, goofy, silly shit. Um, it was just, it took a kind of silly, fun story from A New Hope. And it, it took these characters and it took them into a completely different path, it raised the stakes, it had the massive plot twist of, of Luke being Vader's father. Sorry, all the way around. Uh, uh, and, yeah. You know, some, some really great moments, especially on Dagobah, with Yoda, the Yoda scenes and the Yoda dialogue was brilliant, and I just, I love it. I love it so much. However, in terms of emotional value, I would have to say, it's kind of a joint favourite, but it's kind of not, just because the rest of the film kind of sucks, not sucks, but it's not as good as the rest of it, but Return of the Jedi. It used to be... Return of the Jedi, 
I've gone through weird phases with it where it's gone up and down my list quite drastically. Like it's you know it's never falls below like a super low line, but as a movie, I don't know. Like the first act with like Jabba and like Jabba's palace is really fun and I don't hate it, but it's just when you come right off the back of Empire, it's a little bit jarring. But it is still good fun. Then I think it really slows down in the second act. And I, the second act is probably my least favorite of the... And then anything with, like... I don't hate the Ewoks, but I'm not super interested in, like, anything that Ewoks are doing in that movie, really. But in terms of the Luke, Vader, and Emperor scenes are just some of the, the best Star Wars we've ever had and probably will ever have. The music, the acting, the cinematography... Just the, the, the atmosphere and the tension of that of those scenes is just perfect. And like you get like the, the moral message of 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 Luke like refusing to fight his father and it's just it, it it honestly is whenever I think of like what Star Wars is, and we'll go on to favourite Star Wars moments in a minute, but whenever I think about what Star Wars is, it's it's always that. Third favourite is the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi I it's probably the Star Wars movie that frustrates me the most. Even though I really like it, because I think it could have been so much better than what it was. And I think if Ryan Johnson would have maybe had a couple more years, and maybe a couple more years on him, like in, in his own experience, to maybe make a bit of a darker movie, a bit of a, a bit of a um, more like serious in tone movie, because there was elements of that, and there was there was some really good stuff in the Last Jedi, and I really like some of the scenes. Some of it's a little bit too. Star Wars should always be optimistic, but some of it's a little bit too, you know, like Finn and Rose and. That kind right. of atmosphere with it. Not that I don't like it. Like, I don't dislike those the Finn and Rose scenes, but it's just another example of like Star Wars being a little bit goofy at times, and I don't really think it needs to be. But obviously, it's down to the director as well. So you know, that's completely his choice. It was definitely the movie that had the most to say out of like, you know, because obviously, like the original trilogy has its kind of like own message, but it like runs over the course of the trilogy. The prequels kind of have their ongoing themes in the movies. The Force Awakens said nothing at all but the last jedi really did have something to say don't think it necessarily nailed its execution but in just purely conceptually the last jedi was is probably one of my favorite star wars films i just i just get frustrated with it because i really think it could be like 10 times better than what it is if if he'd really been given the time and the and the and the experience to to really nail it but um yeah that's just that's just my yeah no absolutely i was just gonna say what, what you said about in uh, return of the jedi of the fight between luke uh like the emperor and vader mm. uh, how i said in new hope like there's like no there's like only two other incidents in like star wars where i actually feel like the thrills of like the the trench run the fight uh, was a, a mm. where the score is i think it's called anger of the jedi where luke goes full-on like super yes, saiyan dude. mode against his own father that absolutely that is the other moment where i lose my shit i love it and uh, regarding last jedi absolutely when i even though i put on top three like the finn and rose story i like it and in the end i think it does more good than bad uh, right. but it's also it's right. like right. i agree did you really need this? But no, I, absolutely. And it also ties into like the, the epilogue scene of the, the little, uh, the yeah. stable boy. Yeah. So in yeah. the end, if, if that was necessary for, uh, that final epilogue scene where it kind of democratizes the force, like you don't need to be a Skywalker per se to be a, a force user, someone who can make a difference in the galaxy, then yes, absolutely. But yeah, sure. So I agree with you. Sure. I, I, and I, I, I do, I do, you know, see that, that side of things. My problem with Last Jedi isn't so much what it did, it's what it didn't do. I think there were certain things that really, like, missed an opportunity on. Um, so, like, I don't really hate anything in The Last Jedi. I hate what it didn't do. And I really think they could have they could have done more with, with the general premise of it and, and made it into a tight script. That, that, that's literally it for The Last Jedi. But it's, it's, it's a weird one because it, it's the one that annoys me the most, but it's also, I, I also love it. And there are some great scenes in that. And, and the acting is probably the best, some of the best we've seen in, in the entire saga with um with Adam Driver and 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 Mark Hamill and um I really like Andy Serkis as Snoke as well. I think he's brilliant in that movie. He's t- he's, he's you know Snoke is boring as hell in uh The Force Awakens, but in The Last Jedi he's he's great. I, I love him. Oozing with character. So yeah, that that that's it for the for the Star Wars movies. So now we'll do favorite Star Wars moment. You can you can maybe have two. I'll say I'll say you can have two that maybe join up. But it's not like a top three list. It's just like this is my favorite, and maybe this ties with it. But if you have an absolute favorite, 
then just say that one. So, Mike, favorite Star Wars moment? Okay, so I didn't know there was going to be two, but the one the the one that came to mind immediately is actually in arguably my least favorite episode, and uh, it's uh, Attack of the Clones. And I like the movie. It's it's by necessity. It's like my least favorite, but uh, by necessity. But I think Attack of the Clones is the most underrated it Star Wars film. The, it is. is. People they they don't give it a fair shot. Like me, I put it at the bottom by necessity, but like I have my reasons. We'll go we'll go into that uh, probably in okay. another episode if it if it's relevant. But anyway, my favorite like absolute favorite uh, uh, scene is like where uh, Yoda is telling I think the. I forgot the name of the clone trooper. I think he actually had a name in Legends, but he tells them, concentrate your fire on the nearest starship. They bring down the Separatist, like, uh, troop ship, ah. and then there's just, like, a big wave of dust, you know, and they're, it's uh, it's overwhelming, like, the, the Separatist and the uh, the clone army, and they're just, the, the clones, they are not phased at all. They fight in the shade, and they just, it's right. like a, uh, I forgot, I think, what's the, uh, the channel that does the... Uh, the uh, honest trailers they even said it's like this movie is like 100,000 like, people uh played by the same actor going against a bunch of robots and it's like a glow <laughs> stick party but you know it's so freaking just badass and i from there yeah uh, even yeah. when i watched it as a kid that movie i had so much respect for the clones and that tied into you know my respect for republic commando and the battlefront series like, you always wanted to be a clone where if like God. this thing falling right on top of you and just like blanketing the whole field and like dust and darkness does not phase you, then what will? So that, yeah. that's my favorite scene. Sure, on, it's good pick, good pick. Uh, Liz, favorite Star Wars scene? Favorite Star Wars scene. Uh, that's super hard. <laughs> right before the fight with Anakin and Obi Wan, Episode Three, mm. like that whole little uh, speech oh, monologue yeah, yeah. thing. That was really good. It was super corny, but it was some really of the, good. Yeah, but it's kind of self-aware about how corny it is, and it, it actually is some of the better dialogue from the prequels, in my opinion. I love how, like, ticked off Anakin was. He just, like, went from zero to 60, right, like, yeah. super quickly, yeah. and I, I love it. And then, definitely, at the end of uh, Last Jedi, with uh, Kylo asking for Rey's hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, acting superb, mm. beautiful. Probably the best acting in any Star Wars movie. Like, if I'm being honest, mm. just in the raw emotion. And then... I mean, you've done two, so that's like a... Uh... Yeah, I've done two. I mean, I have like a bonus one, but it's not really like... It's more like, a, it. like a semi-moment. It's... Okay, so it's the moment with um, Anakin uh, looking out at the... Like the sky... And Padme's oh, ruminations is playing in the background. And he's like, yes, looking, yes, 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 yes. Such a great. Scene. That is literally one of the most beautiful moments in cinematic history. Like, there, no talking, no dialogue, but just like, it. You feel everything. Like, you feel the weight of everything that's about to happen. Isn't it great and, when movies can just slow down a little bit? Yes, because that's what I feel like the, yes, the sequels exactly. really couldn't do much of. Is just exactly. slow. I mean, there was a couple moments that worked. Well, in. In TLJ, they they had those moments with like Ray just like looking off and yeah, like, they had a couple. Or, like, um, yeah, the one that, the one that specifically comes to mind of the sequels for me, ironically, uh, is The Force Awakens, which was a movie that just really couldn't slow down. But there's this, you know the scene where like Ray's going about her like daily life and she's just kind of like making the bread and oh yeah, sitting, oh yeah, yeah. Really, really that was scene. yeah, really great scene. That's yeah, that is a really great scene. It's see, like the movie started off really good, right? Or at least, I mean, up until I think that The Force point. Awakens is is a fine movie. It's just so derivative, and I just think the trilogy could have gone off to a much more interesting start. Character wise, I quite like it. I just think, I think, yeah, I think all the characters, to their core, like in the sequels, are really good. Like, yeah, some of the, I don't think anyone's a, utilized to their full potential though. Like I think every character No, they're could not, have been. but I think the idea of them was there. Yeah. Well, I mean Ky- like, Kylo Ren's my my absolute well, Kylo oh, Ren yeah, Ben Solo's my absolute same, favorite. Same. Yeah, by far. Yeah. I I don't even know what like cuz when I think of like the sequels, I just get mad. Like I just get <laughs> mad at episode 9 and that's all I can think yeah, about. Like Yeah. Cuz it's I, the last one as well and I don't hate yeah. episode 9, but I just don't, I don't like, like, when I think about it, like, there's some moments, like, the Han and Ben scene, like, that was, that was, yeah, that but was even so that good. Was, yeah, but even that was, like, a reuse of dialogue, and 
God. But it was like poetic though. Mm. Yeah, it's dialogue. called poetry. Like it was. Me- well, it had to be though. When it comes to JJ Abrams, <laughs> like, it, it had to be because he he's not a force like ghost. Yeah. When when it comes to JJ, I get it. Yeah, he's literally but... he literally says you're just a memory. He's replaying everything from his memory and like what yeah, he wants to hear. Whatever, like... whatever, whatever. No, sequel hater, then... sequel hater. Jake, <laughs> 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 just tear us hater, man. Just tear us hater. No, I don't hate the movie, but I have, I have. Severe. We all do. It, we all do. Say. But I think a lot of oh, people. Yeah, I, I think when when the sequel trilogy wants to be good, it's it's good. Yeah, like yeah. like you said, like the moment with Ray and and TFA, mm. like the moment with with Ben, the all the slow moments with Ben and Ray and TLJ, yeah. or like even just like Luke talking mm. to Ray, like all these are moments that are slowed down and like character building mm. moments, not like pew pews and like vroom vrooms like <laughs> dude oh, <laughs> you know whenever i think of that i always think of um the worst kind of like action sequence of the sequels it's always like the, the fucking um when i ever think of like useless action it's the scene in tiros when they're on pasana and they're flying away yeah from, they're on the speeders exactly and it's like exactly choo, choo, choo. and like Ray, I, I just i mean how uh, how to make an um an unmemorable action scene in one fucking sweep. But anyway, sorry, I don't yeah. want to be this like I don't want to be this like sequel hair because I'm not. But um No, no, like we're not. If we're talking we're not, about we're this like... now. We're talking yeah, about it. Listen, I, listen, we're I'm... probably going to be talking very little about sequels, <laughs> prequels and originals in the High Republic show. So let us just yeah, let's true. just let's just yeah, get we this have out to get it out. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I love it and hate it. I yeah. I think that we are the generation of prequel people that hated prequels, but it's with sequels. Mm, um, you think like the kids, although, the kids of um, today are going to love the sequels? I think kids in like ten years will like the sequels. Yeah, because if but, you can, if you can like, um, if you can like the prequels despite all its flaws, then yeah, you can like if the I sequels, can surely. like Jar Jar, right? <laughs> unironically now, then I think I can get over yeah, yeah, um, sure. the sequels. Because it didn't have anything like that. It's just, it had so much potential, and they had so much money, and they had the every means to make a good story, yeah. but they just didn't. And that's the most frustrating part for me. I think it was hiring some of the wrong people. Oh. <laughs> um, One person in particular that's, that, that I could think of. <laughs> but I don't want uh, to do a hate fest of... Uh, it's probably not the person that you're thinking of. The audience members. Um, I'll just say it's J.J. Abrams, but anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, we're, we're not Kathleen haters. No, no. Um, oh, no, no. God, no. Well, she... Well, yeah. Okay, she wasn't hired. She, she is She is. She yeah, is the hire. she is. She is the <laughs> She Lucas is the Senate. <laughs> no, Kathleen Kennedy's doing a... Uh, sorry, we shouldn't really go on to the Kathleen Kennedy job, but I think she's doing yeah, a good job. No. Anyway, anyway. She she does what she can. Uh, Liz, are you, sorry, are you done, Liz? Sorry, are you done with your top three? Top top three, yeah. I mean, because I don't want to put the 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 Padme Anakin thing in there. I already had an an episode three one. That yeah, works. It works if you if you if your favorites oh, are from I the guess. same movie, it's fine. Uh, Manny, top Star Wars moment. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little bit more unique here. Instead of going off the there movies, I'm gonna go off the television shows. My oh, my okay. favorite moment that from just animated shows. From all right. Specifically, I feel cheated. Are we doing I'm movies? Cheated. Just movies? No, no. You know what, Manny? No, you not know what? just movies. No, no you know he what? has to do We're movies. Do movies because that's not fair. Movies. We'll we'll do we'll we'll maybe another time. Oh, you, you, you know what? one from the movies, Manny, and then you can do TV show. Just just play a little bit by our rules. Yeah, okay. You do little, get your little bonus one. You get your bonus one. That's all you get. Well, well, I feel like everybody's already already talked about all of the iconic scenes from the movies. So there's not really much else to say on that, you know. You know, I'm last, I'm going, everybody's gone through everything. I'm not, I'm go why are they special else? to you, though? I want to know why Why they're special to you. Alright, alright. <laughs> uh, they'll do one from each trilogy. My favorite in the original trilogy is the throne room scene with Palpatine, Luke, and uh, Vader. Probably mm-hmm. one of the middle ones where you can feel the tension between all of them. I think that's great. Mm. Really feels like Star Wars to me. Yeah. From the sequels... There, are, there's a lot of moments in there that I really like. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I'm just gonna pick um, just one to talk about things. I'm gonna pick Ben Solo in Rise of Skywalker, just to say that there's some good scenes in there in a film I don't like very much, sure. that are mostly carried by Adam Driver. But and I think Daisy he, Ridley, I think in Episode yeah, Nine, specifically. yeah, she does some good work. The, the actors, they're, they're She's trying. She's very good in Episode Nine. 
Yeah, um, but go ahead. Yeah, I just like like Adam has like almost is given almost nothing to do with Ben Solo, but he still makes an impression. I think. Right, right. It's very good. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Makes a great impression for like about sixty seconds of screen time. <laughs> so I enjoyed that very much. And in the prequels, uh, the more I start thinking about them, the more I just like the general theme of them. Less actual mm. scenes. Oh, I suppose anything in episode three with uh, Palpatine and Anakin can be yeah, fun. Yeah, the opera scene's great. The opera scene's fun. It's also a meme, so it has that going for it. Oh yeah. Oh god. What's your What's your TV scene? Give, give us one of them. Where the Night Hill? Where the Night Hill? Just break the rule. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I really liked. Uh, all right, I'll do it quick. In Clone Wars, I really liked the uh, Order sixty six scene. Yes. Like next episode three. That was great. In, Re- in Rebels, I really liked Kanan's death. Felt like that was very impactful. And of course, mm. in the greatest animated show, Star Wars Rebels, <laughs> I really enjoyed the betrayal of Tam. And, you uh, belong on the night hill, my friend. You that belong. Was fantastic. Absolute Dude, iconic. Do you remember our iconic. like our original podcast where we were talking about Resistance and uh, we were yes. like hellbent on Ye- uh, Ye- was it Yeager or Yeager being Yeager. the spy? Yeager. <laughs> yes, with like no, with like no evidence. I was just hellbent on like claiming this man to be an imperial agent of like the highest order. Sorry, that's brought back some memories. Uh, Resistance. What a what a what an interesting show that was. All right, my 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 favorite Star Wars moments. Probably absolute favorite is the moment where Luke throws his saber down when he refuses to fight Vader because I love that the the kind of greatest act. The moment that defines Luke Skywalker as a hero, our protagonist of the original trilogy, maybe the saga as a whole in some certain ways, his moment, and this is why, it, sorry, I don't want, sorry, I'm not going to go on to t hate, but I'm just going to say, I'm just going to imply it. I like the fact that his moment of triumph, his moment of proving himself as the hero, is a refusal to fight. It's not an aggressive move, it's... It, it just fits in with the, the the core theme of Star Wars, and it's just beautiful. And he, refu- he just it's it's not I'm gonna kill the Emperor. It's not I'm gonna blow up myself and save the galaxy. It's not a big moment in the grand scheme of things. It's not a massive. It's not something on a massive scale. It's just a man saying I will not fight my father. And I I just I just find that to be so beautiful and so perfect to encompass everything in Star Wars. Absolutely. That it's just amazing. My second favorite slash joint favorite is actually from one of my lesser favorite Star Wars movies, which is The Rise of Skywalker. And it's a Ben and Ray scene, and, it, and, and I, I can almost guarantee it's probably not one. And it's, it's, it's literally a moment that goes on for maybe 10 seconds, maybe less. And it's probably not a scene you're thinking of. It's probably, it's not the kiss, although I love the kiss. It's not the revival, although I love the revival. It's the scene where Rey notices Ben through the Force Bond just before she's about to kill Palpatine. And it's 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 just a simple... The music kind of quiets down, and it's just this silent moment where the two characters share this glance. And this is where the, the, the kind of the greatness of, of these two actors come in, comes into play, because it's just a look shared between them, and that look is everything. It's not... It doesn't... Like, and, and these are the, these are when I think these like small moments really shine in star wars these the, other than like these these kind of like grandiose gestures of of revival and redemption and which is all great but the little moments that just make up a scene that they just hit you emotionally and yeah i just that that's my 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 joint favorite scene of star wars despite it coming from not the best movie i just think it really encompasses everything about these two characters and, and the journey they've been through, and just the kind of the pain and the struggle and the and the and the, the, the all the kind of drama they've gone through with those two characters is just it just in that moment where they just kind of they nod to each other and you just see it in Ray's eyes specifically. I mean, as much as I think that Adam Driver is is probably the stronger, uh, well, definitely the stronger actor out of out of anyone in the sequels. That scene, I always, I don't know why, but I always think of Daisy Ridley's performance in that in that little moment. I think she's in the Rise of Skywalker. I, I, I really think she's great, and um, yeah, she she sells that scene for me. I think I think Adam Driver, he he was great as Ben Solo. I think he was absolutely wasted as Kylo Ren in the first half of, of the Rise of Skywalker, or the first two thirds of the Rise of Skywalker, I guess, until he gets till he turns back to the good side because they really they really didn't keep going with that nuanced um, and pained 
root with him. They just kind of went for evil, evilish villain, and uh, didn't really commit either way. But that's that's Rise of Skywalker in a nutshell. Refusal to commit. And I guess I guess seeing as I've got uh, I've got every one from uh, the other two trilogies, I guess I'll pick one for the prequels. Ooh, for the prequels, I I would. I'm probably gonna kick myself because I'll probably think of one later that I prefer. But just off the top of my head, I would again. I would say it's a, a silent moment. And someone's already mentioned it, but it's Padme's ruminations when Anakin and Padme are looking at each other through the. Uh, it's almost like a force bond that they've got, right? It's it's it, it, it's it's actually kind of an inverse of the Rain the Rain Kylo scene I've just talked about. Actually, you know, they, but they notice each other, but they're kind of sad, and it's 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 just a it's just a great moment. And and John Williams was really in his prime in some of the, you know I think in, in a lot of the a lot of the prequels um, original soundtracks he was really in his prime, and uh, I love the orchestral kind of creepiness of uh of, of that you know how good that scene is that scene is uh what is it with padme's ruminations that one is so strong and i that was it uh, hayden christensen and natalie portman and john williams it, it, it also he, they own that scene in, in large part because of that score it is because mm, of that score absolutely. that my one of my least favorite Star Wars video games, Force Unleashed Two, where the the story is like super short, but it's it's good, but oh. it's super short and rushed. There's a scene where they reuse Padme's ruminations, and it's because of that one scene that you should play the Force Unleashed Two, and that is how much we should owe, like owe to John Williams and the score. My God, I mean, he really added a completely new element to, to Star Wars. I I don't think Star Wars would be what it is without him, and I guess we'll have to see what the future is going to be without his uh, his genius. Yeah, it's a well-documented history that the original cut of Star Wars uh, was a mess, and John, yeah. and even when they edited it down to be tighter, the John Williams music just adds a whole other dimension to the films. Mm. He is he is the, the 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 true character behind these this franchise. I think he he really is the the glue that holds it all together. All right, well, I think that pretty much sums up because we are creeping up to an hour now. I don't know what it's going to be once we edit it down, but we should probably wrap up. Most episodes probably won't run this long. We're aiming for around the half an hour mark, but we'll see how things go. But yeah, so obviously, uh, we hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, that wasn't too much High Republic content. Um, In actual episodes, we will be talking about the High Republic. This really was just an introduction. Introduction to us introduction to the show but we hope you enjoyed it don't forget to check out all of us on uh, our high republic and our great hall of the night hill where we're posting and talking about the high republic when we're not on here absolutely and don't forget to join our discord group the starlight beacon which we will link in the description all right and that is all for now we hope you keep riding the storm all the way to join us for the next episode and remember we are all the night hill